to 1855 when a scientist needed fire for an experiment, they used a candle. Candles, however, were only mildly effective. They burned out quickly and were not reliable sources of heat. Enter Robert Bunsen, a chemist and inventor who solved this problem by creating a constant heat source to use in experiments, the Bunsen burner. Though Bunsen burners may look slightly different, they all have the same basic parts. A barrel where the gas and air travel together to make a flame, a hose or tube that attaches to a gas jet, a vent that allows for airflow, and a valve to adjust the gas flow and therefore the height of your Bunsen burner flame. We have two different styles of Bunsen burners that we use in our science lab. I'm going to review the differences now. These are the two burners that we use in our science lab. They actually aren't that different, but some students get confused. They both have the same basic parts of a hose that attaches to the gas valve, the barrel where the flame is going to come out the top. They both have vents, and the difference comes in where the valve is, which is how you adjust the flame. On this style of Bunsen burner, the valve is located over on the side. It's this little knob that you twist back and forth. On this style of Bunsen burner, the valve that adjusts the height of your flame and gas flow is located underneath this Bunsen burner. It looks like a little flower. You twist this from one side to another to adjust the height of your flame. Now I'm going to pass the video over to Mr. Milberg, who's going to teach you how to make a Bunsen burner flame. So now, how to use a Bunsen burner. First tool you need is a striker. The way a striker works, move this back and forth to create sparks. A lot of students won't push the, the striker and it doesn't create very many sparks. The trick is to push down and across to create a lot of sparks. I see a lot of students be really shy in using the striker. They'll take it and move and try to light the flame from way up here. The best way to do it is to go right in for it and stick it right over it and light the flame. This flame, although it looks really cool, not the kind of flame we're going for. It's too tall and I don't have the right color. So first I'm going to adjust the, the way the flame looks by adding oxygen. So if I open up the oxygen valve, I am able to decrease or increase the amount of oxygen coming in and what I'm shooting for is a cone. You can see that cone start to form. Right about there, that's going to be the hottest part of the flame. That's where we're going to want the beaker or test tube, whatever we have in there, sitting right on that tip of that inner cone. I also think this flame's a little bit tall, so I'm going to make it shorter by adjusting the amount of gas coming in with this valve at the base. I can tighten it or loosen it, and right now I'm tightening it. Decreasing the amount of gas. Now one, one other trick for adjusting gas is moving the actual master valve with the gas coming in. If I close it a little bit, it also adjusts the gas. Tips and tricks, things to be aware of. First of all, goggles are a must. You always have to have goggles in on during the lab. Second, common sense, don't reach over the flame. Um, girls, you need to be careful with longer, or anybody with longer hair needs to be careful not to uh, bend over. You want to have your, your hair up so that it doesn't get in the flame. Um, another big one, and I'm actually going to turn it off to show you this, is this valve that adjusts the oxygen is on a thread. And you'll kind of notice it does start to get a little wobbly if you over loosen it. And, it. and if you continue to do that, the top will fall and the flame will, will jump to here. Now if that ever happens or anything scary ever happens with the Bunsen burner, don't panic. First thing you want to do is stop the flame. So you just turn the gas off. Call your teacher over if you have any questions right away, but turning off that, if there's any question of smoking or anything whatsoever, that's going to be the first thing to do. All right, there you go.